Good morning, wrestling fans. Welcome to PWR today, Friday morning, August 14th. It's 2020. It's the man they call me dead. Hey, thanks for stopping by. We are live, not out in the campgrounds of uh, New Jersey. Again, a little, po- little fun poking at Damian Nelson. I said New Jersey was a swamp. I didn't know that he was actually sitting in a swamp with everything else out there. So uh, we will work on that, no problem. But uh, join us Friday morning live from the uh, home base of Colorado Springs, I believe it is. Matthew Thomas. Morning, Matthew. Uh, that would be Denver, Colorado. I know. I'd rather say Colorado Springs because it was yeah, funnier. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was thinking earlier, if you and I had a child, his name would be named uh, Mathhead. Combination of our two names, Mathhead. <laughs> would that put us in Mensa? It very well might. <laughs> <laughs> if you were, if your name was Mathhead, I mean, that would be a very fitting place for you. I'm still uncomfortable seeing that you wanted to impregnate me, but let's talk about wrestling instead. <laughs> uh, folks, we got a little bit of news out on the, uh, the old interwebs here. We're going to talk about SmackDown in just a little bit, but I want to talk about this. There is a chance that SummerSlam may not be at the Performance Center. Matthew, did you read it? I did. Read it just moments ago. Hot breaking news right off the press. There is talk, again, this is unconfirmed, there is talk that SummerSlam may be at the Amway Center in Orlando. That is a building that I was actually in. Uh, Matthew, you said for WrestleMania 24 you took off right after the show, right? Uh, I did, but I was I was there uh, in the Saturday night prior for Rick, for the Hall of Fame ceremony, so I was in That's Amway right. that Saturday night, yep. And I had to leave my vehicle at uh, the Amway Center and be shuttled to uh, the, uh, oh, Man, the stadium, so. The uh, Camping World Stadium for yeah. WrestleMania? So this you was parked like at... Before it was prior prior to it being Camping World, I think. So you parked at the Amway and then went on a shuttle and got sent over to WrestleMania? That's what I... From what I recall, I mean, it's been a few years back, but wow. that seems to be what I remember. No, Damien and I, we, uh, we stayed out right off the OBT, baby. Orange Blossom Trail. Uh, and again, we were on the... <laughs> Probably the cleaner side of OBT, but uh, right by the White Castle. Uh, it was so glorious. It was so glorious. Literally, there was a White Castle right down, uh, like right outside the hotel. You just walk a few feet and it was right there. Yeah, I, I was uh, nowhere near the trail, but I'll be back in Orlando uh, end of October. So I might have to uh, visit this trail you speak of. Is well, it uh, is it like a like a place to go on a hike? I would presume. Yes. If you're hiking for uh, ladies of the night in the daytime. Interesting. Uh, so nocturnal creatures. Uh, I wouldn't say the they're nocturnal. I would say that they're um, doing the world's oldest profession. Oh, uh, you mean uh, probably like managing restaurants, right? Yes. Well, that and manscaping. It's one of two. So oh, interesting. No, yeah, check out Orange Blossom Trail right by the stadium, say about 1030 in the morning. Um, uh, the ladies of the morning are out there walking as well. Fantastic. I'll have to uh, have to look them up on Yelp. <laughs> because you could leave a Yelp preview for Girls on Orange Blossom Trail. Let's get the show back on the rails, okay? Th- that was the title of the Wednesday morning show, P- uh, PWR Today Off the Rails. Let's get Friday's show back on the rails, okay? There is talk that uh, SummerSlam will be taking place at the Amway Center in Orlando. Your thoughts on them picking up the entire production, driving down whatever, you know, I-95 South, you know, looking for our truth and actually taking it over to another building. I'm excited. I think the change in, in venue and aesthetic would be, would be great. Um, I mean, I don't know how much business sense it makes. I imagine that they probably got a sweet little deal on it since it's not being used. Uh, man, that would really, really amp up the, the aesthetics of it. And, you know, like we were talking about off air earlier, you know, you get into a situation where you gradually start uh, being able to have small crowds or socially distanced crowds, the actual public uh, in. I mean, it gives them a home base to operate out of where you can actually gradually start bringing people in. And it takes the whole having to tour, having to go city to city element out of the equation. Um, you know, I mean, I'm very cautiously optimistic that this might be. Um, some way to gradually uh, progress things back to normal uh, with WWE having a home base in an actual arena in Orlando. I seem to recall another company that used to do that. Having a home base in Orlando? Ironically, I think I was there visiting them around WrestleMania 24, but they were at Universal Studios. 
Not too far up the road. Because that was actually the first live uh, impact. It yeah. was a Thursday night live impact. And uh, I think some WWE talent was actually in attendance, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they lost their job the next day, too. Mm-hmm. It was one of the, I think it was, I'm Robbie! I think it was Robbie. It might have been one of the Highlanders. But we, uh, we were we were actually we were shut out of the live show, but we got in a day or two later for one of the tapings. I, I want to say it was, ah, man, it, it was probably the even, Saturday afternoon. I yeah, think. it was a Saturday afternoon because the Hall of Fame would have been that night. I yeah, so we were in the building together. Jamie oh, and I were there as well. Yeah, you were for the for the Saturday uh, taping for the Saturday afternoon show. Oh, uh-huh. well, I did not realize that. Wow. So where commentary was, um, Tanae and West, we were sitting up above them. Uh, we were on the, yep. I think we were on the heel side because remember they had heel entrance That's and face right. entrance. Yeah, I think I think we were right side. We were right side um, entrance for the faces because I seem to remember, and I don't remember many specifics about the show, but I seem to remember it ending with Sting walking up the uh, entrance ra- entrance way. If this was the same show, I mean they may have they may have taped a couple on Saturday. I'm not sure. It's possible. I don't remember, but. I mean, we're talking that was damn near 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I don't remember. Well, who knows? Maybe maybe we bumped into each other at the restroom prior to ever officially meeting. That's possible. Then that would make sense that you are trying to, you know, ha- me have your baby. So, I mean, it's just so weird. Let's get back on the trail. It all, co- it all comes full circle. <laughs> don't say that again. <laughs> so we got the, like I said, a chance that they may show up. I wonder business sense wise if it makes sense. You say that it makes sense because they're getting a building at a you know a knockoff rate. I say how much money does it cost to haul the gear over there? To you know, do they do pyro? Do they you know set up a uh, a set? I mean, how much is that going to cost? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's a bold move. Um, I mean, because right now it sounds like it's still a closed set, so you're going. Uh, you know, basically uh, there's more expense associated with it and it's not anything that you can really recoup, recoup. Um, right, exactly. in the ne- in the near future. But like I said, it's just, it's me speculating, but it, it's, it's encouraging to me because it feels like, okay, maybe there is a gradual, maybe there is some way forward uh, as far as what they're planning once things start um, normalizing again. So yeah, it's you're going to take a loss most likely uh, initially, but you get to a point where you can gradually start having crowds. You don't have to think about a touring schedule. You don't have to think about, OK, where are we going to be at week to week? So maybe uh, it seems like they're laying the groundwork for something. Sounds like it. All right. We got one other thing we want to talk about. Matthew, we've been a spoiler free, pretty much uh, spoiler free zone since you and I've been doing the shows, right? To the best of my knowledge. I mean, even when we were doing Nitro flashbacks, we didn't spoil the following week. And it was here's already in the, the can here's for 20 the, years. Here's the thing. I've had some pretty spot-on predictions. <laughs> um, so, I mean, this, you can say spoiler-free if you want to. But, I mean, it's it's pretty much uh, it's pretty much I say what's going to happen in a preview, and it happens the next week. You know, that's, that's why we're getting that Orange Cassidy driving for Uber storyline. That's right. Which, uh, again, you know... Orange Cassidy's not driving for Uber. Orange Cassidy defeated Chris Jericho. And it's it's also why we're getting SummerSlam on a submarine as well. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of funny. You know, I used to have a web TV page way back in 98-ish, and I called it Meathead's 100% Wrestling Predictions. And you know what it was? It was the results. Yeah. <laughs> it was always posted right after the show went off the air. I don't know how that worked. I mean, but somebody run across that, you know, it's like, man, this guy's uh, this guy's spot on. He was spot on. All right. Uh, one other bit of news that we want to talk about real quick. We're not going to spoil it. If you choose to go on the Internet and you choose to look this up, that's your choice. There is word for the next Dynamite, which will not air next week, Wednesday, but next week, Saturday after uh, the NBA or at six o'clock Eastern. There is room, rumor that a former WWE star who has held some gold before in the company will be debuting on Dynamite. Uh, Matthew, before the show went on the air uh, this morning, you had told me that you had some predictions. I'm pretty sure we can say right now it's not Deuce and Domino. Uh, what about The Undertaker? The Undertaker? No. Hmm. Yeah, those are the only two uh, 
predictions I got. I'm just scratching my head now, so I'm, I'm not sure. If it's not those two, then I'm out of guesses. Again, go ahead and look it up if you choose. We're not going to be talking about it until it happens on air. That's our promise to you to not spoil. But a former uh, WWE star does make his debut on AEW Dynamites this coming Saturday. Not this Saturday, but next set uh, on the 22nd, I think it is. Mm-hmm. 22nd. It's ironic that it's happening on the 22nd, but what other show happens on the 22nd? What other big pay-per-view is on the 22nd? That sounds like it might be TakeOver. Right, TakeOver. And then what's on the 23rd is SummerSlam, possibly from a submarine, according to Matthew Thomas. There you go. All right, so let's talk a little bit about SmackDown coming up tonight. We are one week away, but one week and some change away from SummerSlam on a submarine. And uh, first off, we've got Braun Strowman promising a monstrous confrontation with the fiend Bray Wyatt. How do you feel after that uh, debacle? And I'll say debacle. How do you feel about that debacle on um, Horror Show, the Swamp Match? How do you feel about them still continuing on with Braun and the Fiend? Yeah, I mean, that's that's where we're headed. I think they're just... Uh... They're, they've just got limited options right now, unfortunately, you know, and I mean, I think it goes without saying that uh, a Braun title run was not the initial plan coming out of WrestleMania, uh, but due to everything with Roman Reigns, that's the way they went. And it's just, uh, man, it's just, they're working with, with what they've got right now. And I am intrigued with the Alexa Bliss involvement. I want to see that uh, progress. And I, think it's going to eventually progress with her aligning herself with the fiend very interesting kind of throwaway line from uh last week about Braun saying that he doesn't care about alexa uh right so i'm interested in this honestly more for the alexa bliss involvement than anything else I, i've been saying that for a little bit now i've been you know what i think she's going to be the sister abigail we've yeah. been promised the sister abigail for how many years now yeah and really what it has piqued my interest when she stopped the fiend from doing whatever he wanted to do last week by putting her hand on his. And again, you know, I, I don't know where I would have been if not for watching her on the Our truth show. She's absolutely adorable. I love Alexa bliss right now. And watching her work with the fiend has been amazing. Yeah. And as, as much as I've enjoyed her and Nikki Cross together, I feel like the whole moment of bliss, those two drinking coffee, that's run its course. You need something different. You need something that feels new. And somebody, uh, you know, with with the fiend, somebody else involved in that, uh, you know, as a sidekick, as Sister Abigail, somebody else working with him feels new. Yeah, there you go. All right. And Alexa Bliss will have a sit-down interview to discuss her run-ins with the Fiend yeah. Bray Wyatt. Who's doing the interview, Bray Wyatt? Maybe one of his, uh, maybe one of his friends in his funhouse. Ooh, the Vince McMahon doll. Yeah, that would be the fun. evil Vince McMahon or the John mm-hmm. Cena doll. Mm-hmm. I love you, man. You're the best. Book it. Yeah, that could happen. That I mean, so we've got two different Fiend segments that are really going to happen. There's also, uh, apparently, the triple brand Battle Royal was announced to determine Bailey's SummerSlam challenger for her women's championship. So it sounds like the tag team championships are not being defended because uh, we're going to have Asuka and Bailey, or excuse me, Asuka and Sasha, and then now Bailey's going to get a challenger at SummerSlam after this triple brand Battle Royal. Yeah, I'm very intrigued to see where they go to here. Um, you know, Asuka and Sasha feels a little bit, uh, you know, kind of old, and we've done that before. So I'm hoping for something here that, that comes across as fresh I've got and it. new. Are you ready? Uh-huh. There's a young lady, a young woman, that uh, lost her belt to Charlotte that came back yeah. and has been kind of getting beat down on NXT. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just thinking that. I was just You know who has real- her in the PWR draft? Uh, who would that be? That would be the man they call me. Oh, Shayna wow. Baszler Very. is my pick to Very win the Battle Royal thing. and take it off of Bailey. Interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing that. I wouldn't mind seeing that at all. Give me appearance points, give me title win points, all of it. That's what I want to see. Big E looking for another win to build momentum into his clash against John Morrison. Um, this is a small story that, again, during our COVID times, 
has gotten more interest on it. Big E is now single, you know, as far as his uh, not hanging out with the New Day because yeah. Xavier's still hurt, and now Kofi's uh, freshly hurt, so Big E is the story. Can Big E get that final singles push that he's never gotten? A hundred percent, and I think that... You know, as great as New Day has been as a unit, and I feel like everybody has, you know, everybody has, uh, you know, shined. I think Big E, at least for me, as the one who has impressed me the most, is the one who has, you know, really stuck out in that group. And it, it, sorry for the injuries, and I, you know, I'm I'm sorry that the those other the other two guys are hurt, but I think it's very refreshing that you see a singles run that's not coming from a faction breaking up. That's not coming from the typical, oh, they're going to have an argument. You're going to have somebody who's a heel, somebody who's a face, and they're going to go their separate ways. No, they're still together, uh, but they are, you know, Big E's pursuing a singles career. He's still part of New Day technically. So very refreshing that you're launching somebody into a singles career without it necessarily meaning the end of a group and without having to clear that hurdle of the tag team breaking up and wrestling each other or the stable breaking up and wrestling each other. So really excited to see, you know, Big E and his singles push and excited the fact that it did not necessarily necessitate them having to break the new day up. Yeah. The new day, you know, I remember you and I doing a, what iteration was it? Was it Monday night meltdown? Uh, would have been if it's shortly after they premiered, it would have been 14. So that would have, I think that would have been post meltdown and post the uh, the live video. I think I'm not sure what we would have, I don't remember uh, what moniker we would have given ourselves at that point. But I remember us talking about it and seeing that it debuted with this whole gospel thing. And I remember us shitting on it. We did. Was that back? Was that back during our buckle banner days? The Buckle Banner? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Buckle Banter is exactly what we called it. Buckle Banter. Yep. Let's talk about buckles. You know, I'm from Texas. I got a buckle. Buckle Banter. Well, yeah, that's exactly what that I was. <laughs> I thought so. But my point is that then we started to see what they were doing, and I loved the song, and it really grew on me. And here we are, you know, what, six years later now? Yep. They are the seven-time tag team champions. I think it's seven. Might be six, doesn't matter. But I mean, they're multiple time tag team champions. Kofi Kingston got a lengthy championship run, a WWE championship run out of it. Xavier Woods, I think there's a lot more coming from him yet. Yeah. And let's see what happens with Big E. So I'm pretty Here's, excited. What's so interesting with the New Day, their trajectory, uh, it, it just dawned on me. It reminds me a lot of kind of what happened with The Rock because you had you know, a baby face that the fans kind of turned on and who knows, maybe that was the idea from the beginning with the new day. I mean, maybe it was, that was the plan from the start, but it was a, you know, foreseeably a face premiere of new day. And then eventually the, the new day rocks turned to new day sucks and the fans, you know, didn't get behind it, but then they came back around, you know, so a it's very, it started off from free pancakes. Yeah. Yeah. A, I mean, do it. That'll do it uh, every every time you start you start throwing any type of food product into the audience. Um, you know, here's the thing though: we, we got to really look at it coming. You know, once things normalize and we kind of get into a post-COVID era, I, I, I don't know. Two things that you might not see much more of is you know the food disseminated into the crowd and uh, Hangman's uh, consumption of random beverages from from random people. Well, he said he's done. I mean, yeah. he personally said he's done. But yeah. then again, will the water spitting stop? Oh. Triple H is a big water spitter. Yeah. Well, I don't think he's necessarily he's necessarily spit into the crowd. So as long as he can, but he's it. aiming. That's projectile <laughs> projectile oh. fluids. <laughs> wow, you're right. I mean, he does get some pretty. He does get some height on that, and yeah. And I mean, an old wrestling gimmick was to get hit and spit and have it fly out. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's that's true. Um, wow, yeah, there's a lot that's gonna most likely change. We might have seen a lot of stuff for the last time and never realized it. Who knows? But we haven't seen Retribution for the last time, and uh, I'm afraid, my friend, that they will be on SmackDown tonight. I've made it clear over the last week ish how i feel about it 
how I feel that it um, during these unprecedented times, now more than ever, um, we need a new normal and retribution is not it. What do you think is going to happen tonight with retribution? I'm not so convinced that this just doesn't disappear. I you mean, like really, the hacker. I yeah, I I think keep an eye on this over the next couple of weeks, um, because if if there is any type of angle to get dropped, it's it's this it's this right now. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do it with no payoff, but uh, I mean, there's like we talked we've talked about this week. There's just a lot of dark stuff going on right now in WWE. You got somebody's kid getting beat up. You got um, a gentleman in his early seventies getting punted in the head. Uh, yep, and then talked of, about how I'm better than your dead son. There's a lot of, yeah. And who knows, maybe, maybe retribution, maybe the whole point of retribution was just to turn the lights off when the punt happened and we'll never see him again. Yeah. The good news is that the characters that are underneath the hoods won't get burned like Muhammad Hussein did when yeah. he did the undertaker thing. Cause they saw his face and that was it. Yeah. He was done. And, and, that I mean, was, that's, and, and that's, that's, I mean, that's something too, like, you know, if they go ahead with this and it gets the feedback that, that it seems to have been getting, um, I mean, what, what's going to happen to the trajectory of, of the people under the hood. So, I mean, maybe the best, maybe the best thing at this point is just not to pay it off at all. And, uh, you don't have anybody who's, who's necessarily been hurt from it because nobody's, uh, you know, nobody's been exposed as uh, as to who's under the hoods. I mean, there's talk of obviously who it was. I mean, I mean, look, Mohammed Hussein. I mean, I thought was just absolutely amazing, and he had a great look, and that dude was on the path to becoming a champion. But you know, because of what happened, because of the way he looked, I mean, it's not like this dude was from the Middle East. I think he was yeah. from Detroit, right? Uh, but he just looked that way, and that's unfortunate. That. You know, he got that stigma put on him. And, dude, literally, I mean, that was the guy. I mean, that they could have used that guy for a long time. I mean, think of the great Kali, but in shape and younger. Well, hopefully this wasn't his big return. You think he's under the hood? I mean, is that what you think it is? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that just be terrible? Oh, my God. <laughs> He'd be in the White Hummer. Go, I was the one driving a White Hummer in Nitro in 1990. <laughs> Uh, you just you just eventually have somebody just own up to being all of the uh, you know all, all of the, the bad gimmicks, gimmicks that have ever yeah. happened. Yeah, maybe maybe he was the anonymous raw GM as well. You know who else he was? He was the guy underneath the stormtrooper helmet that tripped over the wood. Yep, yep. Now that that sounds like him. <laughs> well, that's what he does. All right, folks. Uh, shenanigans galore, of course, with Matthew and uh, the man they call me did. But hey, like and uh, comment and subscribe for us on all the socials. You know, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. We had a super show yesterday with Damian, Dave, and Shane Helms. We're doing it every week. We are pumping out content like uh, nobody's business. So for Matthew Thomas, I'm the man they call me did. Hey, thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone.